नमस्कार व्यूअर्स हेलो एंड वेलकम टू सन्स टी वी आई एम टीना झा यूर वॉचिंग हेल्दी इंडिया एज द न्यू ईयर बिगिन वी विश ईच अदर गुड हेल्थ एंड हैप्पीनेस मोस्ट ऑफ आस मेक न्यू ईयर रेजोल्यूशन टू स्टे फिट एंड हेल्दी प्लानिंग डिफरेंट एक्सरसाइज एंड डाइट रेजम्स एंड इट्स इम्पोर्टेंट फॉर मेंटेनिंग आर फिजिकल एंड मेंटल वेल बींग स्पेशली बिकॉज ऑफ द इंक्रीजिंग रिस्क दैट अ सेडेंट्री लाइफ पोजेज फॉर अस वन ऑफ दैम इज द डेफिशंसी ऑफ विटामिन डी the sunshine vitamin which is essential for the human body to thrive and function properly we are all aware vitamin d keeps our bones teeth and muscles healthy but new studies have now found that low levels of vitamin d could also be a trigger for cardiovascular diseases now according to a study conducted at the australian center for precision health at the university of south australia cancer research institute vitamin d deficiency can increase blood pressure and the risk of cardiovascular diseases So is there a correlation between vitamin D deficiency and increased cardiac events? If yes, how can we prevent this risk? How often should we check our vitamin D levels? How can we make up for the deficiency of vitamin D? All this and much more on the program today with two distinguished guests who are joining us on the program. Please to welcome Dr. Rajesh Khadgavar, he is professor Department of Endocrinology All India Institute of Medical Sciences and Dr. Parjeet Kaur, she is senior consultant Department of Endocrinology Medanta Hospital Gurugram. Thank you to both my guests for joining us on the program today. Uh Dr. Kaur, let me begin the program today with you. For the context of our viewers, uh what role does vitamin D actually play in our body? Why is it so essential? So vitamin D is a very important nutrient to our body. So main two important functions of vitamin D is one is that it helps in absorption of the calcium and phosphorus which is present in our diet. and secondly it keeps a check uh, on a hormone called parathyroid hormone a hormone which causes a bone breakdown so by maintaining these two functions it maintains a normal calcium and phosphorus levels in our blood which are very important for our bone health so that is the main primary function of vitamin d however vitamin d receptors are present throughout our body so vitamin d has also been shown to be uh, helpful in many other organ systems including your heart kidney liver immune function and there are many suggestions that you know vitamin d deficiency can lead to all these disorders but all these are into research areas primarily the function is in the bone health okay dr khadgavar uh, you know the fact that uh, one of the studies now claims that vitamin d deficiency could also be related to cardiovascular diseases and that is particularly concerning because if we go by numbers about 40% of indians lack sufficient vitamin d so before i uh, you know come to the correlation between vitamin d deficiency and cvds let me begin uh, by understanding from you what's really behind the high number of people in india uh, you know being detected with low levels of vitamin d considering that ours is a country we get sufficient sunlight uh, around the year so what really is causing the deficiency of vitamin d yes it's a very valid question uh, our country is sun drenched country sunlight is available throughout the year and most of time we are exposed to sunlight but still we are vitamin d deficient uh, you are saying 40% but there are different studies which suggest 70 to 80% or to the tune of 90% are vitamin d deficient if you use the international cut off of uh, 20 nanogram per ml if you take that cut off 90% uh, of our normal population is vitamin d deficient in spite of having so much bright sunlight one of the reason is the 80% of our vitamin d comes from sunlight and only 20% comes from diet and that also from non vegetarian diet vegetarian diet there is hardly any source so 80% of vitamin d should come from sunlight but there is hardly any sun exposure because of environmental pollution because of uh, we are not exposed to sunlight we we start our work early in the morning when there is hardly any sunlight and we come out of uh, our workplace when again sunlight has gone back and uh, with taller structures and environmental pollutions there is hardly any sunlight exposure plus our uh, we are little bit darker in comparison to the caucasian so we require more sunlight exposure mm -hmm. or this sunlight exposure is lacking it has been seen uh, studies done from olinia institute of medical sciences like those who are exposed to sun there was one building was construction was going on and those who are working in that area when we check their vitamin d they were vitamin d sufficient so it's primarily because of lack of exposure to the sunlight uh, vitamin d deficiency is there in the second part of the question and you know i cited one of the research that's been conducted in one of the institutes in australia the fact that they're saying that 
maybe vitamin D deficiency is also triggering a lot of cardiovascular diseases. Increasingly, we're seeing, and in India also, people between 40 to 50 of age groups are increasingly, you know, losing their lives because of heart attacks or because of uh, such disorders. The, the, the fact that, you know, this is concerning. So 40 to 50 is now being considered as that, you know, age bracket, wherein you have to be especially conscious of the food that you eat, the, the kind of physical activity that you're engaged in. So could this also be a factor? Do you also see a correlation between this as has been claimed in the study? Yeah, so this correlation has been reported not only from the rest of the world, but has been reported from the our country also, where mm -hmm. vitamin D has been linked, deficiency of vitamin D has been linked with the type 2 diabetes, heart disease, stroke, cancer, and uh, all kind of diseases has been linked to vitamin D. So these are only association studies. So what we do is we go to the uh, hospital, we take 100 patients, and we check their vitamin D level and we check their heart disease. So both of them are there. So we can have a correlation. But when we try to give vitamin D and prevent these heart diseases, nothing has come out. So these are association studies. I just give you a simple example. If two people are walking on the road, so they are walking together, but not necessarily they are related to each other. The only way to find out whether they are related or not is just go them and ask whether they are related or not. So they may be completely stranger also. We cannot presume that both of them, if they are walking, so they may be relative. Same thing has uh, happened with vitamin D. We have seen association studies. Vitamin D deficiency is there, heart disease is there. Vitamin D deficiency is there, diabetes, hypertension, everything is there. But these are not causation. This is association study. And uh, results from all over the world have reported similar kind of results that by giving vitamin D, supplementation, we cannot prevent these diseases. So this is still under evaluation and current concept is by giving vitamin D, we cannot help in prevention or treatment of these diseases. Nevertheless, the fact, Dr. Kaur, that a lot of Indians do not have sufficient amount of vitamin D as is required in their body and this could be concerning. Whether or not there's a correlation with other, other diseases is, of course, the subject matter of a larger debate. But the fact that, you know, uh, there are several reasons because of which uh, different age groups are being affected uh, due to vitamin D deficiency. So if I may ask you about different age groups and the impact that deficiency of vitamin D is having among the Indian population. Right. So vitamin D deficiency is clearly widespread and very much prevalent. And you yourself said 40 percent of God governs it almost 70 to 80 percent and a recent study showed almost 490 million uh, people are affected by vitamin D deficiency in India out of which 31 percent are actually children and adolescents. So the vulnerable age groups are mainly the children and adolescents and the elderly age group which are very much prone to get the symptoms and complications because of vitamin D deficiency and children and adolescents are mainly affected uh, in terms of their weakening of bones, softening of bones and which results in a disease called rickets. Rickets is a condition in which there is a bowing of legs, either it could be a knock knees or bowing of legs. And this I have seen a lot of rising cases during the COVID time because of a lot of indoor stays in the children. They came to me after two years of this lockdown period with clear cut vitamin deficiency and they developed these symptoms. Elderly also prone, prone to get vitamin D deficiency complications because their bones are already fragile, they are weak. So vitamin D deficiency in them can cause weakening of bones further. They can be prone to get fractures, like uh, fractures just by falling. So these are the two main groups I feel are very much prone to get. It's also the pregnant ladies uh, should also be careful about vitamin D deficiency because uh, they also need a good amount of, uh, especially it's recommended amount of at least 800 units of vitamin D is required in them as well. So are there any symptoms that we need to watch out for to know whether we have a deficiency of vitamin D? Are there any clear symptoms that are yes. visible? Yes, I mean in children and adolescents it's very much clear once they see that they can complain of frequent bone pains, joint pains and if you see their bones are uh, becoming deformed then we, we can clearly figure out that they have vitamin deficiency. In adults also if there's a severe vitamin deficiency the levels are falling below 12 nanograms per ml they can also get fatigue, lethargy, muscle pains. They can also have muscle weakness, especially from getting up from the chair, from the squat position. They can have those symptoms. They can also have joint pains. And elderly, if an elderly person is getting fractures without any known reason, we, can, should also, if should always, we should always check the vitamin D levels in them because very low vitamin D levels can 
pro get, make them prone to get fractures. Right. Yeah. So, uh, Dr. Rajesh, the next question now is how do we prevent it? How do we treat it? Also, if we, you know, if we understand that we are vitamin D deficient, we go to the doctor. Uh, what, what would you prescribe? Is, is it just the exposure to the sun, maybe spending more time in, in the sun or are there other measures that we should also incorporate into our daily lives? Yeah. So the best way to prevent is natural way, which is free of cost exposed to sunlight. And if possible, everybody is exposed to sunlight. So what we call as adequate sunlight exposure, if our both hands and face are exposed for at least half an hour. So by that we will get sufficient amount of vitamin D synthesized required for that day. So if we are daily exposed, we can prevent vitamin D deficiency. That is the most natural and best way, but practically a little bit difficult because everybody has to rush for work, long hours of work and they have to come back. So the best thing is what uh, Western countries have done, which is still uh, pending in our countries, they have fortified their food with vitamin D. So like their milk is fortified, their curd is fortified, their juices are fortified, their wheat flour is fortified. So if we can fortify our uh, food stuffs with vitamin D, that's the best and very cost effective way of prevention of vitamin D deficiency. Like uh, Dr. Parjit was talking about rickets. So rickets is seen in our country or other developing countries, but is almost disappeared from the western countries simply because they have fortified their food stuff with vitamin D. So even if uh, there is no sunlight exposure, but if they are taking milk, if they are taking uh, curd, juices, so they are getting good amount of vitamin D by food fortification. So, and uh, this is very cost effective method and this is the answer uh, for prevention of vitamin D deficiency. Of late in our country, Government of India has started programs for vitamin D food fortification. So slowly, slowly we are going ahead and uh, we are working in the direction of uh, prevention of vitamin D deficiency. But what have been the challenges so far? Why have we still not been able to do it? You spoke about the Western countries and they've been able to handle it pretty well. Rickets is something that of course impacts our children as well. So when we know what are the solutions, why have we still not been able to you know, work around it and strengthen the framework? Uh, we are raising this voice from last 20 years of food fortification. So slowly it's building pressure and now government has agreed for the minimum fortification. And in between there were reports of accidental over fortification leading to vitamin D toxicity coming from the western countries which is again a deterrent. But the correct way of vitamin D deficiency treatment or prevention is food fortification. So now the government of India has started programs where uh, mandatory fortification is required as especially infant cereals and uh, fortification vitamin D fortification of oils have also been started. Uh, one of the reason of milk fortification is not successful in our country because only 15 percent of milk production comes from the organized sector where we can go and fortify. But rest of the 85 percent does not come from organized sector. So it comes from individuals they are distributing homes which would be difficult to fortify. So at least if we start uh, milk fortification or juices fortification, we can achieve something at least 15% of population we can get. Dr. Kaur, so that having been said, what are some of the common foods that we can include in our diet plan? Because that ultimately is going to be more important. Exposure to sunshine is important, but in terms of the foods that we can include in our diet. Right. So the main source of vitamin D is sunlight. There is no doubt because our skin makes the vitamin D and the influence of sunlight. There are very few food sources available which are rich in vitamin D, which includes fatty fish, the cod liver oil, mm -hmm. the egg yolk also contains uh, vitamin D to some extent. Uh, then we also have mushrooms, but they are mainly sun dried mushrooms which are rich in vitamin D. So from that point of view, I would say that natural food sources are less and as Dr. Khadgawal said that yes, food fortification will help us a lot in getting good amount of vitamin D through food, but as of now, uh, food sources are less. But along with that, also I want to say that uh, along with vitamin D, also important is the calcium intake. But ultimately, vitamin D helps in absorbing the calcium in the diet. So if the person vitamin D level is good, but the diet is poor in calcium, that again will result in the same symptoms like rickets or muscle pains and proximal muscle myopathy. So one should must uh, one should ensure that the milk and the milk products, dairy products are there to ensure at least a good amount of calcium supply. But vitamin D, we have those sources which I just mentioned. Yeah. You know, uh, in our country, uh, Dr. Rajesh, the fact that we, we stress too much on prevention is better than cure.
the fact that prevent something before it happens but at the same time we also would would visit the doctor only when the disease has you know crossed a certain stage when maybe it's difficult to also uh, contain it so both ways it's extreme so in terms of prevention there is lack of awareness how to prevent it in terms of when to visit the doctor wh what kind of treatment to actually uh, adapt to is also something that people wouldn't know about so we need a, a, you know a fine balance of both maybe uh, awareness at a stage wherein they're studying so perhaps the textbook should include all of these suggestions that you know dr kaur just spoke about but i hardly remember uh, our school textbooks which would talk about these are the diets that you should include in your food for vitamin c for vitamin d for so and so and even if they do i mean perhaps they're at a stage wherein when you grow up you would hardly remember so the fact that we need to constantly revisit the importance of all these nutrients into our body so when we attain 40 we perhaps you know have a diet plan or we go into these rigorous uh, you know diet charts that we follow through the internet or through different uh, nutritionists the fact that we enter a very very difficult exercise regime which then proves to be fatal in this kind of sedentary lifestyle that we have and that is very concerning so how do we make it a continuous process which starts from our childhood and it leads you know until the time that we want to live a healthy life lifestyle you have already said uh, that we need to include this type of health education in our routine uh, up to secondary level education we are we are teaching history geography and at the same time we should also include the health education especially prevention uh, of the disease and not only vitamin d there are a lot of other vitamins also which uh, deficiency of them can be prevented and uh, at the same time we need to focus on food fortification and then we need to treat those who are at high risk of vitamin d deficiency all of the population it may not be at high risk but there are certain segments of population like uh, our children who are growing at a faster speed those who are gaining uh, height because they are requiring higher amount of vitamin d and calcium so they they should be supplemented Uh, pregnant women they are at uh, high risk of developing vitamin d deficiency they should be supplemented those who are obese they require uh, vitamin d more and uh, those who are elderly they require calcium and vitamin d so these are our high risk segment they should be taken care of uh, even if we have uh, food fortification supplementation is required in this segment of uh, people who are at high risk of vitamin d deficiency so all three segments increase uh, in awareness of general public increase supplementation of those who are at high risk and at the same time uh, for at the population level we need to go for uh, food fortification program because you know dr kaur the lifestyle that we lead today and which is perhaps the prominent factor of several of these diseases that we talk about we can't change this lifestyle because we we need to sustain if, so for a living if i am working a 9 to 5 job i will not have the time to go and you know expose myself to the sun that perhaps is the biggest challenge in the indian population so we are bound by this daily routine of which it's difficult to get out of so obviously there are suggestions that you've put forth in terms of the diets but how often should we also visit the doctors because i think for most of us what what goes wrong is we don't get regular checkups done in terms of uh, the levels of nutrients that should be present in our body also if the signs are not visible even if they are visible faintly we would not be aware of when to see the doctor so the two questions how often should we get ourselves checked for vitamin d deficiency and how should should we go more for supplements in case we are not able to go for the natural resources so yeah so it's not advisable to get uh, vitamin d uh, tested routinely but certainly the high risk population at this dr khadgavat also told the children adolescents elderly pregnant women and those who are like uh, bound at home living indoors for a long time they should definitely uh, get their vitamin d levels checked also people who are getting those symptoms of vitamin d deficiency which i had mentioned earlier should also get vitamin d levels checked uh but yes it's not advisable that one should get it routinely but in terms of supplementation there are certain rda recommended dietary allowances which are just there for example in children around 400 iu per day and adults 800 iu per day and ldl 1000 iu per day so these are the recommended doses which can be achieved by taking a small dose of vitamin d a lot of time it's combined with calcium as well like you will find a lot of calcium preparations containing 200 to 250 iu per day and there are preparations containing 1000 so 
in adults and elderly it is 1000 IU per day is good enough in adults I think it is 800 IU is good enough. So, that can be taken safely, but one has to be very much cautious that multiple preparations are available, there are very high dose preparations are also available one should avoid because we have seen vitamin D toxicity cases as well. So, we need to balance out between supplementation, prevention, treatment and also to avoid toxicity in these cases. Yeah. Why is toxicity happening? Is it because people are not consulting the doctor and you know resorting to taking supplements on their own? Is that also a case in India? Yes, definitely. And uh, most of the cases uh, are not resulted from the oral supplementation. Most of the cases of vitamin D toxicity has resulted uh, from the injections of vitamin D. So, nowadays uh, these uh, injections are also available which contains uh, 6 lakh unit of vitamin D and we require is 1000 to 2000 units to the max uh, 2000 units per day. So, if we suddenly take a injection of 6 lakhs unit and that injection is repeated by chance, so there uh, high amount of vitamin D is entered into circulation and that results into vitamin D levels more than 150 nanogram per ml or more than 200 that results into vitamin D toxicity which causes increase in the level of calcium what we call as hypercalcemia and when this calcium moves out of the body through kidney it damages kidney and it causes calcification of the kidney it causes renal stones. So, this is a situation where we are inadvertently using vitamin D supplementation without any without any medical advice we are likely to have uh, vitamin D toxicity. If we are if we are taking vitamin D orally and supervised, there are hardly any chance of vitamin D toxicity. Uh, you know, Dr. Kaur spoke about how cases have increased many fold during the COVID pandemic. How have you seen that pattern change? Before the COVID, what was the scenario? After COVID, of course, there have been several factors which have contributed to it. And particularly the age group that the pandemic has, you know, impacted when it comes to vitamin D deficiency and its adverse impact in terms of the various diseases. So, uh, COVID uh, mainly resulted in restriction of uh, mobility. So, people were uh, homebound, there was hardly any sun exposure, they are not moving out, they are not going to uh, doctors, they are not consulting, not even taking vitamin D supplements also. So, this has resulted in suddenly increase in the number of cases who are presenting with the vitamin D deficiency. We need to know that all these cases who are presenting with vitamin D deficiency are not presenting early they present late when they have clear florid symptoms of vitamin D deficiency only then they present and which can be easily prevented. So, this is basically restriction of mobility in some cases those who have received steroid for a longer period steroid also increases the risk of vitamin D deficiency mm -hmm. or certain drugs which were previously we were using in COVID but in second and third way we have not used these drugs. But first and to the uh, maximum first half of uh, second wave COVID uh, uh, infections, we have used lot of drugs and some of these drugs might uh, might have caused to vitamin D deficiency. I will take one last question from you Dr. Kaur, for the most vulnerable population and we have discussed the, the, uh, the age groups that are most impacted by vitamin D deficiency, the fact that it, there could be potential complications if it is not prevented or treated at the right stage. So, for the age group because we are talking about two extreme age groups which are most vulnerable, the, the fact that the people of our generation have to uh, sort of you know be mindful of what's happening. One is the elderly age group, one is the adolescents and the children. So, what is it that we need to look out for among both these age groups to understand at the right stage when to see the doctor before you know complica complications increase. Right. So, for children and also it is very important for parents to uh, notice the child's behavior, the child is complaining of some bone pains, joint pains, especially in infants and children if they are seeing any deformity coming up in their legs, uh, they should be in subtle deformity, they should definitely consult a doctor because it can progress further and sometimes the stage comes when you can, can't be even corrected with the vitamin D uh, treatment also. So, in elderly it is important that one should be watchful again for the symptoms of like fatigue, muscle weakness, uh, if the elderly is unable to uh, get up from the chair easily or the elderly is complaining of joint pains, bone pains or had a fracture. So, I think we should be very much cautious about and get the vitamin D levels checked and uh, treated at the right time. 
Absolutely. You know, with uh, the COVID pandemic, what, what helped us is we were very watchful of the symptoms. So we would get ourselves checked uh, with the mildest of symptoms also. With these diseases and with these deficiencies, which, have, which are quite common, uh, we would not be aware of the symptoms perhaps, and they tend to get overlooked, and then the complications increase. So I think it's important that we are aware of the signs and symptoms uh, that are visible, even if they are visible mildly, and we need to go visit the doctor, because this could lead to f uh, further complications, and then this would require treatment from the doctors, which all of us clearly do not want. We do not want to visit doctors and hospitals for complications, you know, which, which could prove to be fatal uh, for, for our body. So I think uh, awareness, education uh, about all of these problems, and to ensure that we, we include the diets that Dr. Parjeet Kaur just uh, pointed out, uh, adequate exposure to the sun when and uh, uh, if possible. So that clearly is uh, the best way to take care of the deficiency uh, of vitamin D that we are talking about. So with that, I'll have to wind up the program. Thank you to both my guests for joining me on the program today on this edition of Healthy India and sharing your thoughts with us and our viewers. And to you viewers, thank you very much for your time. I'll see you same time next week. Take good care of yourselves. Keep watching Sensor TV.